Welcome. You are listening to Aftersight. This recording is intended solely for individuals who are blind or have low vision. Thank you for joining us for Audiobook News, read from Audiophile Magazine. My name is Sarah. And today let's start off with a handful of contemporary culture title reviews. Of Time and Turtles, Mending the World, Shell by Shattered Shell, by Cy Montgomery, read by Cy Montgomery. American naturalist Cy Montgomery is obviously fascinated by turtles. Her voice is suffused with warmth and awe and compassion that just sweep the listener right along. Montgomery volunteers with the Turtle Rescue League in Massachusetts and gets to know Alexia and Natasha, the founders of the TRL, as well as many turtles with excellent and hilarious names like Pizza Man, Sprockets, Chunky Chip and Fire Chief. Turtles famously move slowly and they can live for over 100 years, but Montgomery is full of more quirky little turtle facts. Painkillers take days to kick in due to the turtle metabolism, and occasionally one is resurrected from the dead. Montgomery's pacing and enthusiasm make for a beautiful performance. Be prepared to lose your heart to the turtles, just as Montgomery has. It's available from Harper Audio, ten and a half hours unabridged. Trade Edition Digital Download, ISBN 978 or $27.99. Opinions. A Decade of Arguments, Criticism, and Minding Other People's Business. By Roxane Gay, read by Roxane Gay. Author Roxane Gay performs a collection of her non-fiction pieces from the last decade. The essays range from cultural criticism to celebrity profiles. For example, she interviews Janelle Monet about how Afrofuturism influenced their album Dirty Computer and examines the future of the Black Panther franchise after the death of Chadwick Boseman. She also writes about big cultural moments, such as the rise of hashtag MeToo and the protests that took place after the murder of George Floyd, carefully crafting her thoughts with fresh insights. Whatever her subject, Gay's performance highlights her direct, clear prose and sense of humour. She presents her ideas in a deeply personal way that connects with her listeners. It's available from Harper Audio, 10 hours long, unabridged. Trade edition, digital download, ISBN 978-006-334-1494 for $26.99. Bartleby and Me, Reflections of an Old Scrivener, by Gay Talese, read by Mike Ortego. Mike Ortego gets Talese. Ortego artfully performs Talese's polished sentences and captures the flavor of his urbane worldview with a writerly tone. For this is an audiobook of enhanced remembrances. Talese returns to the sights and sounds of his most famous and influential piece of creative nonfiction, the new journalism classic, Frank Sinatra Has a Cold, and entertains the listener with its backstory and context. There is a fine new piece on the bizarre death of Dr. Nicholas Bartha, who blew up his Upper East Side townhouse in Manhattan, and an insightful profile of the famous New York Times obituary writer Alden Whitman. Indeed, there is much about the Times in the 1960s, the paper where the now 91-year-old Talese got his start. It's available from Harper Audio, 8.75 hours long, unabridged. Trade Edition, Digital Download, ISBN 978-035-857-8376 for $27.99. And now for some young adult titles. Rook by William Ritter, read by Nicola Barber. Nicola Barber's crisp British accent and tone of self-doubt work well in depicting Abigail Rook. Abigail has recently inherited the psychic abilities of her employer, R. F. Jacobi, the protagonist of four previous mysteries. No longer an assistant, Abigail must now take the lead in the firm's supernatural detective work. Barbara shifts smoothly to Jacobi's American accent and confident tone, establishing his role as Abigail's mentor. Dialogue between the two characters is excellent, whether its tone is bantering or conciliatory. Minor characters, trolls, ghosts and shapeshifters are clearly defined. 
Barber's steady narration adds believability to an audiobook that merges realism and supernatural elements involving murders and kidnappings. It's available from Hachette Audio, 8.75 hours, unabridged. Recommended for ages 12 and up. Trade Edition Digital Download, ISBN 978-164-904-1371 for $27.99. Pride and Prejudice and Pittsburgh by Rachel Lippincott, read by Natalie Nordis and Shakira Shute. Natalie Nordis and Shakira Shute bring this yearning romance to life. Audrey, portrayed by Nordis with an American accent and plenty of sarcasm, is waitlisted for art school after being freshly dumped. After an old man visits her family's convenience store, she's transported back in time to 1812 London. Lucy, voiced by Shute with a gentle English accent, welcomes Audrey's strange arrival as a distraction from her arranged marriage. Helping Audrey fit into society so she can find her happily ever after is quite the challenge but falling for each other comes far too easily. Both narrators excel at switching between the accents and tompers of the two girls, creating an immersive, seamless audiobook. It's available from Simon & Schuster Audio, 8.25 hours unabridged. Recommended for ages 14 and up. Trade Edition Digital Download, ISBN 978-179-716-1617. For 1999. By Any Other Name by Aaron Cotter, read by James Munier. James Munier gives an absorbing performance of this twisty historical adventure. Will Hughes is a young actor who is making a paltry living on the stage in 1590s London. He's also living under an assumed identity. His real name is Elias Wilde, and his family rose up when Queen Elizabeth's soldiers stole their land. When Elias's friend, Christopher Marlowe, playwright and spy for Queen Elizabeth, is brutally murdered, conflicted Elias is swept up in trying to prevent a plot against the Queen and falls into a forbidden romance with young Lord James Bloomsbury. Munier's narration adds to the novel's rich atmosphere as he differentiates between upper and working class English accents, gives voices to Irish pirates and delivers every exclamation of zounds with relish. It's available from Simon & Schuster Audio, 12 and a half hours long, unabridged, recommended for ages 14 and up. Trade Edition Digital Download, ISBN 978-179-716-7862 for $23.99. Phoebe's Diary, by Phoebe Wall, read by Phoebe Wall. Listening to Phoebe's Diary, narrated by the author and artist, is like opening a time capsule from the mid-2000s. Amid pop culture references like mixed CDs and MySpace, drawn from her own diaries, Wall delivers a charming and authentic look at her teen years. From first crushes to first kisses, from body image struggles to friendships and family dynamics, Wall opens up as if talking to a close friend. Unexpectedly funny and achingly honest, she shares her unfiltered experiences. Predominantly homeschooled, Wall takes electives at the local high school and shares her challenges and successes. Like everyone, she's trying to find herself and blaze her own path. Listeners will find themselves rooting for her while occasionally cringing with embarrassment and empathy. A comical and touching listen. It's available from Hachette Audio, six and a half hours long, unabridged, recommended for ages 14 and up. Trade edition, digital download, ISBN 978-166-863-8125 for $24.99. And now for a quick look at some titles brought to you by the partnership of narrator Nancy Wu and author F.C. Yi. Avatar of a Last Airbender, The Legacy of Yang Chen. The Chronicles of the Avatar, Book 4, by F.C. Yi, read by Nancy Wu. Nancy Wu steps gracefully into the prestigious role of Avatar Yang Chen in this prequel to the beloved series. Yang Chen, an air nomad avatar prior to Ang, is the glue holding four nations together. But a powerful enemy, Chai Si, threatens the balance. In her attempt to restore peace, Yang Chen seeks help from Kavik an old friend turned betrayer. 
While the story appears to follow the typical Avatar arc, Wu's interpretation of the rich character development makes this a unique listening experience. Her soothing narration embodies Yang Chen's pacifism, but doesn't detract from the thrilling action sequences. Of course, it isn't an Avatar story without solid relationships between all the characters, and Wu doesn't disappoint. Each line of dialogue is delivered expertly, making this a standout performance. It's available from Blackstone Audio at a length of 11 hours unabridged, recommended for ages 12 and up. Trade Edition Digital Download, ISBN 979-821-201-8715 for 19.95. Also available as CD or MP3. Blackstone Audio has the library edition CD, ISBN 979-821-201-8654 for $107. And more listening from author F.C. Yi and narrator Nancy Wu includes The Rise of Kiyoshi, Chronicles of the Avatar, Book 1 by F.C. Yi and Michael Dante DiMartino, available from Blackstone Audio Unabridged, recommended for ages 12 and up. Trade Edition CD, MP3 or digital download, Library Edition as CD or preloaded media. The Shadow of Kiyoshi, Chronicles of the Avatar, Book 2, by F.C. Yi and Michael Dante DiMartino, Available unabridged from Blackstone Audio, recommended for ages 12 and up. Trade edition CD, MP3 or digital download. Library edition CD or preloaded media. And The Dawn of Yang Chen, Chronicles of the Avatar, Book 3 by F.C. Yi. Available from Blackstone Audio, unabridged, recommended for ages 12 and up. Trade edition CD, MP3, digital download. Library Edition, CD, or Preloaded Media. And now for some more young adult titles. A Guide to the Dark by Miriam Matui, read by Vane Asadurian, Ariana Delawari, and Ramiz Monsef. Narrators Ariana Delawari and Vane Asadurian portray best friends Layla and Myra after a road trip mishap leaves them stranded in a motel. Their room is inhabited by a dark force voiced by narrator Ramiz Monsef. The room wants Myra because she carries the burden of her brother's death. Asadorian's mature and measured voice works well for the morning teen as she and Layla plot to destroy the space. Delaware's softer and more youthful voice is an ideal fit for the introspective Layla, who quietly hopes she can save Myra in time to express her growing feelings for her. Monsef gives a chilling performance as the sentient room. His deep voice is delightfully villainous and menacing. Listeners are sure to enjoy this dark and enticing tale. It's available from recorded books, seven and a half hours long unabridged. Recommended for ages 14 and up. Library edition, CD, ISBN 979-888-956-7011 for 74.75. Also available as digital download or MP3. Clementine and Danny save the world and each other. By Livia Blackburn, read by David Lee Huynh and Josephine Huang. Josephine Huang and David Lee Huynh's earnest performances delight in this winning young adult rom-com. Huang's spirited narration embodies the optimistic 18-year-old Clementine Chan, who writes as hibiscus in her blog, which provides news and reviews on Chinatown. Huynh's deep tones and pacing clearly portray the cranky Danny Mock, a.k.a. Boboboy888. Mock thinks Hibiscus's cringe-worthy posts are superficial and don't address important issues like gentrification. The interplay between the two performers' voices and styles fluidly captures Danny and Clementine's different socioeconomic situations and their increased cooperation in working against Kale Corp, which is threatening to close Danny's family's tea house. Huing and Huang also maintain the tension as the protagonists remain unaware of each other's virtual identities, a sweet, smart listen for older teens and young adults alike. It's available from Harper Audio, 7.75 hours long, unabridged, recommended for ages 12 and up. Trade edition, digital download, ISBN 9780063229921. For 
Murder on a School Night by Kate Weston, read by Claire Story. Mix a wild teen comedy with an English country house murder mystery and add a dash of true crime podcast grit and you'll come close to this gleeful young adult story. When a popular girl enlists Annie and Carrie to catch a stalker, they think they're finally done with being outcasts. But when Carrie's meet-cute moment with the new kid Hottie is interrupted by a dead body, mystery-obsessed Annie is ready to take centre stage. Claire Story's teen portrayals run the gamut from level-headed but shocked Carrie to overzealous Annie. Story crafts the secondary characters with convincing portrayals of a wide variety of teens and bumbling cantankerous adults. It's an edge-of-your-seat laugh-out-loud listen. It's available from Harper Audio, ten and a half hours long, unabridged. Recommended for ages 14 and up. Trade Edition Digital Download, ISBN 978-006-326-0306 for $27.99. Girl on Trial by Kathleen Fine, read by Reba Boer. A series of bad choices ends in tragedy in this novel. The narrator, Reba Boer's solemn yet heartfelt narration guides listeners back and forth through time as a teenaged Emily stands trial for causing a young family's death. Burr's narration captures the building pressure Emily feels as she moves through the contentious trial. Burr's voice has a weariness to it that works well to depict Emily's overburdened and economically depressed community, especially her loving mother, who always seems to have a drink in hand. Burr goes all in during the heartbreaking trial, most notably when Hannah, a reckless teen who puts peer pressure on Emily, takes the stand. Burr's narration expresses the despair and grief Emily and her community face because of one fatal mistake. It's available from CamCat Books, nine hours long, unabridged, recommended for ages 14 and up. Trade Edition Digital Download, ISBN 978074430934 for $20.95. A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed, read by Saskia Marleveld. Saskia Marleveld's brisk narration sweeps listeners into an atmospheric setting that blends fantasy and reality. Marleveld portrays the dissatisfaction and resentment of literature-loving Effie Sayre, whose gender is holding her back at architecture school. Marleveld shows Effie's pride and passion when she's selected to design a manor home honouring her favourite writer, who has recently died. Arriving at the remote, crumbling estate, she is filled with regret and fear. Her feelings worsen when the malevolent Fairy King appears, Marleveld animates all the characters, whether human or fairy. Most notable is her portrayal of Effie's caring fellow student Preston, who partners with her in a literature project involving mysteries about the past. Marleveld builds their attraction as it blossoms into romance. It's available from Harper Audio, ten and a half hours long and abridged, recommended for ages 14 and up. Trade edition, digital download, ISBN 978 0063211537 Zero zero six three two one one five three seven for twenty seven ninety nine. And now we have an article by Vicky Smith listening to the pictures, graphic novels in audio adaptations. I love graphic novels. The dance on the page between dialogue and art and the way speech bubbles and sound effects create the illusion of sound. I was naturally skeptical about audio adaptations. The illustrations are so integral to the experience, how could a 100% oral presentation compensate for their loss? So I tried one. To my astonishment, the experience was not one of loss at all, but one of plenty. The audio script filled in narrative details supplied by the illustrations in the original. The actor's vocal skills realized the characters as individuals. The sound effects were actual sounds. How cool! I was convinced, but still curious. To find out more about the adaptation process, I spoke to the creative minds behind three recent audio adaptations of graphic novel memoirs for middle grade listeners. Shannon Hale, author of Best Friends, illustrated by Lu Yen Pham, played an active part in Macmillan Audio's process, starting with the transformation of her original script into what listeners hear. It's leagues different, Hale says. 
Christina Suntornvat turned her original script for The Tryout, illustrated by Joanna Kakao, over to executive producer John Pels and his team at Scholastic Audiobooks. How is this going to work? It's a completely visual medium, Suntornvat recalls wondering. But director Kevin Thompson and writer Garrett Scott did a fantastic job at resurrecting the script back into words that would be spoken. Cece Bell did her own illustrations for her Newbury Honor-winning El Defo, and Penguin Random House Audio executive producer Matei Ageropoulos worked for, from the finished book. During the audio production, Ageropoulos had the quality control team listen and read along, telling them, If you feel that something is lost, let me know, and I'll have the actors describe it. In this way, Lexi Finnegan and Sarah Tubert, the two deaf actors who played Child Cece and Narrator Cece, collaborated in creating the narrative. When there weren't bubbles or narration blocks, Agiropoulos explains, I told them, let's describe this. What do you see Cece experiencing? Then there's the sound design. Hale says, we wanted to support kids who are different kinds of learners so that the print and the audio can be read simultaneously. We leaned on audio cues, sound effects, music, and things so that it could feel more like a radio drama than a traditional audio book. For the tryout, Pels had author Suntornvat record the kids' cheer as a model, rather than try to guess at its rhythm. The importance of sound design is particularly elevated in El Defo, which is all about hearing and not hearing. In the print edition, Bell's speech bubbles vividly suggest her difficulties hearing, Tom Croak with Tim Bader Audio worked with Agiropoulos to ensure that Cece's dialogue and narration are clear, but most of the dialogue spoken to her is muffled to capture her experience. Every choice in all three books seems to have been made with equal care. Some were planned, such as having Suntornvat's Thai-speaking sensitivity reader give the tryout a listen for pronunciation, and deciding that Texas twang actor Brian Sunalath would give Christina's father's Thai accented English. I love that, Suntornvat exclaims. Other decisions were made well into production. For best friends, Hale originally wanted the male actor who plays the villain in the fantasy novel Young Shannon Wrights to voice her younger self's anxiety, represented in print with sinister white-on-black lettering. When I listened to it, I realised, oh, this is all wrong. It was scary in the wrong way. She asked Macmillan Audio to re-record those lines with Mia Jenis, who plays young Shannon. They graciously did, and I was really happy we did because it feels much more accurate to the experience. The results, three excellent graphic novels and three excellent audiobooks. Like I said, how cool. And now for a review of Best Friends, Friends Book 2, by Shannon Hale, read by Shannon Hale and Full Cast. Author Shannon Hale narrates as a full cast enacts the drama of her sixth grade year in this adaptation of the middle volume of her graphic memoir trilogy. Portraying young Shannon, Mia Jeunesse evokes excitement, uncertainty, and hurt, painfully and exquisitely, as she picks her way through a friendship minefield. Her circle of friends is not so fully individuated, with the other cast members playing multiple roles. The effect reinforces Shannon's sense of social isolation. A panoply of sound effects helps take listeners back to 1985, introducing them to such antique noises as a cassette tape clicking into place and a dot matrix printer at work. A boisterous conversation among Hale and her twin daughters, original to this production, connects then and now. An empathetic antidote to sixth grade. Available from Macmillan Audio 3.25 hours long unabridged. Recommended for ages eight and up. Trade Edition Digital Download ISBN 9781250891716 for 14.99 And that is it for me for today. Thank you for joining us for Audiobook News. My name is Sarah.